Hi, welcome to the Save It For Parts channel. In this video, I'm doing just a quick intro and overview of a new toy that I've bought. Okay, so this is the RTL SDR, the uh, basic software defined radio. And I'm using the very cheapest one I could find. It's about 10 bucks, comes with this little antenna. I actually have mine hooked up to my rooftop antenna, but it comes with a little baby antenna here. And the software that I'm using to interface with it is GQRX for Linux. There's a variety of programs for Windows and Linux. Um, you just have to download the right drivers from the internet. The little dongle here comes with a driver disk, but it's meant for digital TV. So you basically just throw that driver disk away and download stuff from rtl-sdr.com. It's a software-defined radio, which means you can tune it to almost any frequency in the software versus in the hardware. I am not an expert at this. This is the first one I've had, and I don't really know all of the things that you can do with it, but I'm finding it really cool to see a visual representation of the radio spectrum. It only does about 2 megahertz at a time, so you have to tune around if you want to see different frequencies. And you can change the frequency up here, you can directly enter what you want as a frequency in megahertz. And the display is showing basically what's going on in this frequency range in real time. And then this waterfall display down here shows kind of a recent history graph. So if you go to So if you go to something like an FM station, this is the history graph of that FM signal. This is the real-time view of the FM signal. Uh, there's some other stations over here to the side. So if you tune this thing down as low as it will go, and just kind of listen to a nice dead area in AM, sometimes you can hear lightning strikes, and you can see them as a line of wideband interference going all the way across the screen. We've got some thunder happening outside, so and there was one right there. You heard a little bit of static. You see this wideband line. There's a lightning strike. Been looking on this online lightning map, and they use a similar system of multiple receivers that can triangulate where the strikes are. So they're showing some recent lightning strikes there. You can also listen to what you're seeing here. And uh, I've got the squelch turned up right now, but if I turn it down, we'll actually get some audio out of these different channels. I'm going to turn that back up because it's annoying. Uh, you can change your mode, AM, wide FM. This would be like a broadcast radio station. Um, narrow FM would be something like FRS or police radio. Uh, these sideband frequencies are kind of the old style AM stuff. CW is Morse code. Raw is just kind of the raw input, DMOD. These don't really sound like anything, but uh, those are some of the different audio options. And then you can change the gain. You can change a lot of other things that I don't quite understand. You can go over here and change your decibel filtering so that the graph looks different. You're basically filtering out some of this background noise. A lot of this is just background solar radiation, um, random RF noise, and changing the decibel setting kind of lets you see some of the active frequencies a little differently. Sometimes better, sometimes not. Uh, sometimes you get just a constant signal on a narrow frequency like this. Something like this is probably interference from my own computer. So it's some circuit in my computer or in my monitor or something else in the house that's just putting out um, radio frequency interference. If I try to listen to it, it's probably just going to be like a whine or a buzz. So another type of interference that you get sometimes are harmonics. So you'll have a main harmonic or the main frequency that something's on and then you get side harmonics. For instance, way down here in the 30 megahertz range, I've got what sounds like an FM station. 
and it's not really the right frequency range for FM broadcast. So I think this is just interference from an FM station that's up around the 90s or 100s. There's actually another harmonic of the same frequency here. So if we turn this on and listen, we'll hear the station here, and we'll hear kind of a echo of it over here. And then if we scrolled up to the uh, regular FM band, we would probably hear it even more clearly. That is NPR's Greg Myrie. Thank you, Greg. So there's uh, NPR side harmonic. Here's another side harmonic of NPR. As part of our ongoing look at and here's the correct frequency for NPR, 91.1, and it's really clear, really strong here. These other ones that you can see disappearing off the waterfall were less strong, so those were echoes, essentially. FM tends to have those harmonics on the lower side, down into the 30 megahertz range, but not so much on the upper side, because that would interfere with aircraft communication. So they have to pay to have a filter on their upper side output, but nobody really cares about 30 megahertz, so they can bleed over into that all they want, apparently. Let's see, I will go ahead and tune up through FM. So each of these brighter areas is an FM radio station. Here's a particularly strong one. And we can tune in and listen to that if we want. Here's another strong one. Some of these really faint ones that you can barely make out are probably something really far away. So an FM station in Wisconsin or out in rural Minnesota or something like that. You can kind of listen to them if you tune the squelch way down, but they're really scratchy. So now we're up kind of in the aircraft band. And there's not a whole lot going on up here on a regular basis. You can hear some uh, air traffic control things occasionally, but... Um, it's kind of hit or miss if you see them. You have to just camp on whatever channel those are on if you want to hear it. Here's the 2 meter ham radio band. You can see different colors in the background. Um, we saw this kind of lighter yellow in the lower frequencies. And as we're going up the spectrum, it's getting to be more of a darker orange, which I think means I'm getting more background noise and more kind of general static from things like solar radiation. Um, just background electronics noise in the air and that can affect how well you can pick up a certain frequency if there's a lot of background noise you can't tune in your signals as closely I'm not sure what these little guys are these could be just interference here's another really defined uh, interference signal this is probably some circuit in my computer that's just making a whine so these will pop up now and then they're just kind of pollution on the RF band. I try to ignore those. This looks like more of a standard FM VHF transmission. I believe this is weather radio if I go ahead and click on it. it was mostly sunny. So that's the weather radio frequency. So here we have some kind of digital traffic. It's these very densely packed signals. And if we listen to one, it's just going to be like modem noises. So I think this is a military band. So this is probably some kind of digital National Guard traffic or other military traffic. We would need some kind of decoder to actually listen to the audio. So here's a busier section of business band frequencies. And... My antenna is tuned a little closer to this UHF range, so I'm able to pick up quite a bit more stuff in here. There could be just as many transmissions on other frequencies, but um, since my antenna is not tuned to those other frequencies, it's not getting as much. A lot of these are digital modem noises again. But uh, every now and then you can see one that's an analog voice frequency. And you kind of have to look at the waveform down here to see the ones that look like voice. This one looks a little more like analog. So I think that's some sort of TV rebroadcast. It's not actually somebody's business radio. They're just retransmitting television audio for some reason. 
So here's an even busier area. Uh, this is just below FRS frequencies. And there's all kinds of digital data happening in here. So I don't know what any of this stuff is, but it's a really busy part of the spectrum. I think this is technically a TV frequency, but um, I'm not really sure why we can hear it because I think it's supposed to be digital. Now I'm not 100% what's going on up here, but uh, I think we're in cell phone territory now, so there is a lot happening. So this is um, trunked public safety territory, or the armor digital trunking system. So these are probably all police and fire, and we would need additional software to decode the audio from these. And then if we really wanted to follow the trunking system, we'd need two SDRs, uh, one to run the control channel, and one to follow these talk groups as they come and go. And then I think this might be kind of the ever-present background cell phone radiation. You can see it just starts to be here in the upper half of this band. And then it just cuts off pretty sharply right here. So I don't know if this is just kind of some always-on cell phone background data and then it cuts off at that frequency or what, but there's definitely a lot more background radiation in here than there is upstream. And there's plenty of times that I don't understand what I'm looking at at all. So there's some kind of bursts of uh, traffic going on in this frequency range. Uh, this is up in the 900 megahertz range, so this could be anything from mobile phone handsets to toy cars to I don't even know what. And there are a few different websites where you can actually go and look up mysterious signals based on what they look like in the waterfall display. Here we've got some space aliens. That's actually more likely to be interference from one of my appliances. So one thing that you'll probably have to do in the input controls or somewhere, and depending on what uh, program you've got, you'll have to go in and set this frequency correction. And that's going to vary based on which device you've got. For the USB dongle that I have, it's about 40 ppm. Now, sometimes your system might just lock up or freeze, or you might be trying to tune things, and nothing's happening. And in that case, you just want to restart the program. Those little SDR dongles were never really intended for this, and you can easily go outside their intended range, and that kind of confuses everything. So... If it's not behaving quite the way you expect, or if it's doing something weird, just close the program, reopen the program, see if it works better. I do have a handheld version of this with another little SDR unit, and I showed this off in a different video, some things you can do with that. You can use this for testing your own radios, or testing out interference patterns of various devices you have and apparently you can use it to fingerprint different devices based on their RF spectrum noise, which is kind of interesting to me, but uh, not something I've done just yet. You can also do things like radio astronomy and satellite operations if you have a dish or other antenna, and that's probably something I'll do in the future. So that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.